Hi friends, thanks so much for being a part of Rhythm this morning. We are really glad that you are here. Don't forget to let us know that you are here in the chat and stick around until the end of the video in which we will give you opportunity to get something uh, really cool, honestly. Stick around. Welcome to Rhythm. Scripture is full of extraordinary moments, extraordinary stories. And some of those moments, some of those stories are so extraordinary that they transcend scripture, they transcend church. And people are aware of them even if they have never read the Bible, never set foot inside of a church, never heard a single sermon or sang a single song. Stories like David and Goliath. And if you've never ever set foot inside of a church, you are still aware of not just the original story of David and Goliath, but all of the connotations of the story, the connotations of the underdog, which not only shows up and battles the, the favored champion, but ends up somehow, some way, winning. This is what makes uh, March Madness, the NCAA tournament, great. When um, we hold out hope, that the Davids, the 16 seeds of the world, somehow, some way, defeat the Goliaths. Now, when most people think of this story, that's what they think of. They, they think of uh, the moment where David walks onto the battlefield. And to give you a sense of what the battlefield looks like, essentially, the way that Scripture describes this battle is there's two mountains, and in between these two mountains, a valley. And on one set of these mountains are the Israelites, the uh, predominant characters in the Old Testament, God's chosen people, and their king Saul. And uh, on the other mountain range, the Philistines. And the Israelites and the Philistines are battling for control of the land. And the way that they have chosen to fight this battle is not this army and this army slamming together, but uh, they each are choosing a champion. And so the Philistines have chosen Goliath, this giant of a man who walks down into the valley, and he does this for 40 days, and he raises his voice to let Israel know that he is ready for battle. For 40 days, Goliath not only challenges the Israelites, but he challenges God, the God of the Israelites. And for 40 days, the Israelites, they hide. Scripture says that they're scared and specifically mentions Saul, the king, the person who is supposed to lead Israel into battle, the person who is supposed to be the Israelite champion. Scripture says, He's scared. And so David, ostensibly to bring his brother's food, his brothers who are fighting, he walks up on this scene. He, he walks up on the mountain, and as he is making his delivery, he hears Goliath essentially talking trash, talking trash to the Israelites and talking trash to God himself. And David responds, now, most of the focus of this story is the moment where David walks into the valley, not with armor and not with a spear, not with, not with military might, but instead the tools of a shepherd, and ends up defeating Goliath, ends up killing Goliath. That's where most of the focus of the story is. But the great majority of Scripture focuses not on the battle, but everything that comes before. Not on the moment where David slays Goliath, but the conversations that David has, first with the Israelite soldiers lined up on the mountain, and then with the Israelite king, Saul. In these conversations, in 
the prequel to this extraordinary moment, we get a peek into who David is. And because we get this peek into who David is, this story is more than just an upset. It's more than just a little guy beating a big guy. In this story, and especially the prequel leading up to this story, we see what makes David extraordinary. This is the story. We will pick it up in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. And this is the moment where um, David has, he's heard Goliath and he is responding in kind. This is verse 32. David says to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine of Goliath. Your servant will go out and fight him. Essentially, David is saying, look, if nobody else is going to fight him, I'll do it. I'll do it. Scripture continues, verse 33. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy. And he has been fighting. He has been a fighting man from his youth. Verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, verse 35, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Verse 36, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied, he's talked trash, the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me, verse 37, from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Now, in verse 37, like David unlocks the key to really this particular extraordinary moment because David reveals what he has been doing. David reveals what he has seen God do. David reveals his connection with God and the courage that he has that comes from that connection. Now, listen, David's moment here, the extraordinary moment that happens to David is, is the result of the connection he has with God, the courage that comes from that connection, and the calling that David is able to fulfill because of the courage that he has. Now, this is not just courage that comes from David's own um, trust in himself or, or, or trust in his own ability. Instead, the courage comes from the connection he has with God and the courage allows him to fulfill God's calling on his life. Essentially, what David is describing here is the movement from connection to courage to calling. And here's the thing, my friends. You can't have one without the other. You can't have courage without connection, and you cannot fulfill your calling without courage. Courage is the engine that makes your calling go. And throughout scripture, we see God calling men and women. We see men and women respond positively. We, we see men and women respond negatively. But in this moment, in this particular moment, David, because of the connection he has with God, has the courage to take on Goliath. He has the courage to fulfill the calling on his life. Now, you'll remember that last week when we talked about how Samuel, God's prophet, anoints David as king. And so this is the moment, this is the moment where David lives into that calling. And this doesn't happen unless David is connected to God. This doesn't happen unless David has the courage to fulfill his calling. Three things. They build on each other. And every extraordinary moment in Scripture, and I think in life, comes from this. Connection. Courage. Calling. I believe that God is active. I believe that God is as active today as He was throughout these pages. I believe that God is as active in you 
as he was in David. And I think, I believe, that if, if enough of us commit to this extraordinary courage, that enough of us uh, commit to, to this extraordinary calling, that extraordinary things can happen. I hope you'll be a part of it. That's my prayer for you, that you would have extraordinary courage to live into your extraordinary calling. My friends, thanks again for being a part of Rhythm this morning. We want to send you a special gift and what we hope is a reminder for the extraordinary calling that God has on your life. A calling that is as valid today as it was back then and as valid today as it will be for the rest of the year. And so we want to send you a sticker. It's like a holographic sticker uh, that says our yearly theme, Extraordinary. And you can have it. We'll send it to you. Uh, just let us know that you are here and we will make sure to mail that to you. So you can have that as a constant reminder of the possibilities, the extraordinary possibilities of what God can do through you this year.